All right, I want to call to order the regularly scheduled meeting of the Murfreesboro Unit District 186 for the month of May. And Mrs. Hines, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Bain. Here. Mr. Beavers. Here. Mrs. Brazel. Here. Mr. Green. Here. Mr. Brown. Here. Mrs. Evaldi. Here. Mr. Rundy. Here. Next item is the Pledge of Allegiance, and today is Mrs. Hines's. <laughs> birthday 40th I think but <laughs> will, you, will you be so kind as to leave sure. us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all Thank you. 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 All right, next item is the approval of the agenda. Dr. Evers, are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? Just one that we will be considering dismissal of uh, educational support personnel. In closed session. In, clo in closed session, correct. Okay. And the other item that I just want to bring to the attention of the board on your de on front of you at your place setting was this sheet of paper that says the board packet contents, this was something that I had mentioned a month or two ago. Uh, we're going to be discussing this either probably in June, but if you know which, which of those reports that you want to keep, just mark it. And if you want to give it to me tonight, that's fine. I'm going to send this out electronically. We're not going to discuss it till at least June, and this is actually going to be <coughs> left up to Mrs. Brazel. Since this is just your second month with the board, I want to make sure you have plenty of time to look through these reports and see what you want to keep and which ones you don't. So if you want to put it on the June agenda, you can let us know sometime later. If you want to move it to July, that's fine as well. But I just That's the only thing that I had as far as the, the agenda. And I will entertain a motion to approve the corrected agenda. So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item number five is the approval of the consent agenda, which consists of District 186 regular minutes dated uh, April the 20th of 2021, Tri County minutes dated April the 14th, 2021, Tri County bills for May 2021, applications and reports. And I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number six is the approval of the District 186 bills for May of 2021. I'll open the floor to any questions from the board, although Mrs. Bush is not here, but maybe Dr. Evers can answer them. If there are no questions from the board, I'll entertain a motion to approve them. So moved. And a second? Second. second. Mrs. Hines? Mr. Bain? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mrs. Brazel? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Evaldi? Yes. Mr. Bain? Yes. Mr. Rungi? Yes. Motion carries. Item number seven is communications, and I understand we have seven. We do. We have seven. The first one is from Brian Camden. Dear Murfreesboro School District, Unit 186. After 10 years of service, please accept this as my formal notice of resignation as custodian of the Murfreesboro Middle School. Effective June 1st, 2022. I am grateful to have been a part of the 186 experience and wish you and the 186 family continued success in the future. Always Brian Camden. <coughs> and I'll entertain a motion to approve that recommendation <coughs> from the administration. So moved. And a second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. The next one is from Matt Guffman. Please accept this as my notice of resignation as a sixth grade basketball coach at the Murfreesboro Middle School. Thanks again. I'll entertain a motion to accept that resignation. So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next one is from Dana Batson. Dear Lynn, please accept this letter as notification that I am leaving my position as head cheerleading coach of Murfreesboro High School. I have finished tryouts and selected a team for the 21-22 school year. I have enjoyed my time as the cheerleading <coughs> coach and appreciate all the help and guidance that you have given to me. 
If you will allow, I would like to volunteer my time helping the new coach, so hopefully the transition will go as smooth as possible. Thank you, Dana Benson. And I'll entertain a motion to approve that recommendation. So, so second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The next one is from Morgan Smith. Please consider this as my official resignation from MMS Student Council. Thank you, Ms. Morgan Smith. I'll entertain a motion to accept that resignation. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This one's from Sharon Fry, Principal Keener, NCUSD Board of Education. I recently got accepted by the SIUC Noise to National Science Teacher Fellowship Program to participate in the 2021 Summer Research Immersion 2021 she doubled it. 2021 Summer Research Immersion. As per the MEA contract, all coursework past a master's degree is to be approved by the Board of Education. I am requesting that this three credit course be added to my salary upon completion. Thank you for all your support for teachers continuing their education. Sharon Fry. The administration supports that decision. And I'll entertain a motion to approve that recommendation. So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The next one is from Taylor Cavanaugh. Dear Dr. Evers, after the completion of this school year, I will be resigning as a paraprofessional aide for the district. This was a great opportunity, but I will be a full-time student next year and won't be able to work as a paraprofessional. I would still love to coach basketball for the middle school. Thank you. Sincerely, Taylor Cavanaugh. The administration supports that decision. And we'll entertain a motion to approve that recommendation. So moved. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The last one is from April Gordon. Lynn, after much consideration, I have decided to resign from volleyball. My son will be playing middle school baseball and I'd like to watch him play. With things hopefully returning to normal, I expect that the schedule will consist of 35 games and several weekend tournaments. That will certainly conflict with this baseball schedule. Also, I'm running my own painting company and the summer's very busy. The girls really need someone who can dedicate the time to run a summer PE program to make them better. I really enjoy all the support you, Cody, and the rest of the staff has shown the volleyball program. I am grateful to have been part of such an amazing sport, community, and staff. Thanks for everything, Coach April Gordon. <coughs> the administration supports that recommendation. And I'll entertain a motion to approve that one. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That was it? That's it. Next item is fishbowl items, and I think we have some of those as well. I have two. Uh, first one's coming from uh, Jeff Keener, principal at the middle school. I'd like to commend MMS Choir Director Jessica White, MMS Band Director Michael Moreland, MHS Band Director Nick Williams, and Carl Alexander for their work with the students this year. Both the band and chorus held concerts at school recently. Both Groups only practiced together once in a while, once as a whole, and there was an hour or so before the actual concert time. Both groups did an amazing job. The dedication to excellence of the Murfreesboro Music Department and so the students could have been put to more of a test than they were this year, and they passed with flying colors. Thank you, as always, for representing our schools <coughs> in the very best possible way. Uh, second one's also coming from Mr. Keener. Congratulations to MMS teacher Stacy Stanton. Stacy received a Most Valuable Teacher Award from Section 168 and the Withers Broadcasting. Her interview can be uh, heard at a link uh, that's attached. Uh, a well-deserved honor for a great teacher. MMS is very proud of her. I have one from uh, Michelle Asa, Special Education Teacher at Carruthers. I want to recognize our Carruthers cooks. We, have to, uh, we had to evacuate for an early morning fire alarm. They helped supervise students as they got off the bus. When they returned to a long breakfast line, they jumped right in to serve the students with the same enthusiasm and welcoming tone at, that they show every day. My classroom is next to the cafeteria, and I look forward to hearing them joyfully greet the students each day. Mine is also from the desk of Mr. Keener. I'm writing this to commend the staff of Mur Murfreesboro Middle School for their efforts this year. We spent a lot of time over the summer planning for a year in education that none of us would have ever envisioned. 
We then started our first day back in August with notice and shock of the loss of James well, Wells, an invaluable co-worker and friend of all of us. From there, we had an in-person learning, blended learning, remote learning, pauses to in-person learning, athletics, pauses to athletics, COVID counts, COVID rooms, COVID vans, rapid tests, EBP, SEL, and countless other things, <laughs> both large and small in nature. And I might add that the addition of, of extra nurses in the building a few years ago could not have been more timely. Through all of this, the staff at MMS had, has never flinched or complained. They have a, uh, agonized and worried, but continually worked to do the very best they could to provide an education for the kids of this town. I am proud of them beyond words, and you should be as well. Thank you, for all, thank you all for allowing me to work here for the past 20 years. I could not have worked among better people and will carry great memories of, he great memories of here for all of my days. Sincerely, Jeff Keener. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> From Mr. Carrington, the Murfreesboro School District was awarded the Elementary Secondary Digital Professional Learning Grant in the amount of $8,000 to support professional development opportunities for our teachers. The grant funds are being used to support and encourage teachers to study and pass the Google Certified Educator Level 1 and or Google Certified Educator Level 2 exam. I am pleased to announce that the following 14 individuals are now Google Certified Educator Level 1 instructors. Kelly Carpenter, Josh Carrington, Rachel Chamnus, Jennifer Cochran, Christy Desimo, Sharon Fry, Jennifer Good, <coughs> Catlin Langelier, Monica May, Heather Minns, William Moore, Heather Parr, Katie Russell, and Stacy Teft. In addition, the following four staff have also been able to complete the Google Certified Educator Level 2 requirements. Jennifer Cochran, Sharon Fry, Katie Russell, and Stacy Teft. Please join me in congratulating them on their success. Steve Carrington. Is that it? All right, before we go any further, this is actually Mr. Keener's last board meeting. I know he's in the other room, but just on behalf of the board, the district, the community, Mr. Keener, we want to thank you for your service. Um, it's, it's been great working with you. So we want to wish you the best in your retirement and many, many years of healthy retirement. So thank you. Okay. Next item is the Freedom of Information Act request, and I don't see that we have any. We do not. Next item is the recognition of the audience. The Board of Education welcomes the audience to make public or employee comments. The Board has set aside time in the agenda specifically for this purpose. Pursuant to Board Policy 2.230, each speaker shall be limited to a five-minute presentation. Please be aware that while this is the time for the public to express its opinions and or concerns, the Board may or may not comment regarding public presentations. If a matter of public comment warrants discussion or action of the Board of Education, such discussion or action will be added to the agenda of a future meeting. Are there any public concerns? Any employee concerns? Very good. We will now move into old business. <coughs> the first item under old business is a financial and COVID update. Dr. Evers. Um, not much on the finance. We're continuing to work and reshape and shape our um, CARES. We have one CARES grant one and two, the digital equity grant, and the there's one other digital one. Social digital equity and the digital professional development. Professional development. Um, those four grants, um, just tying up those loose ends. If you'd like to see um, our budget detail level, I know that I provided it to two board members just to kind of look at what we've spent and what we're projecting to, to be the details in each of those grants. Um, CARES 3 will be a grant that we'll work on. Um, we've already started the groundwork. Mr. Carrington has a, a very uh, large want and need list for um, summer consideration. So each month you're gonna, going to have additional CARES items, so it will be CARES 3 will be the, the bulk of what you'll you'll see for um, requests for going out for bid. Um, with regards to COVID update, our graduation will be outside. It will be Saturday at 7 p.m. Um, masks will not be required because of the social distancing and the outside venue, so so please know that we will be on the stage. We The, the masks are not required, but anyone who chooses to or would like to when the students are congregating inside the school, 
before they'll wear it inside the school building, but as soon as they get outside and do the processional, so parents will be able to capture full faces, full smiles, you know, the, the pure essence of the child. That was um, an agreement that when the school superintendents in Jackson County had conversations, <coughs> it was supported by our local health department since our venue was outside. So I'm very, very excited that it looks like the weather will cooperate this weekend. And um, as long as that stays the case, we'll be outside, we'll be maskless if, if people are comfortable. Again, they can opt to wear a mask, but the students when they um, process, recess, and are seated at their seats when they go up to receive their diploma will be maskless if, if they desire to. So um, that's a big change from where we started the year. So I think that that's a celebration. Um, I really would like to commend our faculty, staff, students for the, the grace that they've shown this entire year in probably the most trying year that we'll all experience. I mean, it was, <clears throat> no one wants to do A, B, remote, blended, all those. Just being able to say we are in part, you know, embarking on a five-year in-person journey with, with the hopes that really the, the state will fully reopen on June 11th, the return to school will will look and feel so much more like pre-COVID. So um, excited about this weekend and what um, this will be for, for all of the senior moms and dads and the students who are getting to experience a 2021 graduation. I know last year we, we didn't know till two or three days before our graduation if we would have anything in person. And so that was a huge celebration of a different kind because everyone pulled together and created something out of times where you didn't think you could do really anything. And this year, to be able to have a, a traditional graduation is just, I, if you would ask me in October, would we would we be having a 60% uh, capacity football field with no mask? I would have been like, ah, I don't think so. Maybe next year, you know, but we're there. And so that's, that's out of, the efforts of everyone being really, really vigilant and on the full levels, levels of mitigation. So, hopefully, this is one of the last COVID updates we will ever have to have. Correct. But I also need to take a moment, and on behalf of the board and the community, thank Dr. Evers, the committee that she put together to create the reopening plan. As we said back in July, that thing was written in sand. And we didn't know if we were going to make it a week, two weeks. We made it the entire year. So I want to thank you and your team. To the administrators, please pass along our thanks, just as Dr. Evers did, to your entire staff for the due diligence in making this work. And Mr. Young, please let the MEA membership know the same thing, that we are absolutely proud of every employee in this district to make it work. We were a model. And several districts sent people here to see what we were doing. So I commend all of you. So please pass that on on behalf of the board. Great job. Absolutely great job. And some of our employees did ask if they, um, if they started to feel symptomatic or students felt symptomatic during the summer. But that if they call or, or if it's an employee, they can contact. Um, you still have the rapid testing. Right? We'll still rapid yeah. test. I know Ms. Sunny will be at summer school. She's regularly available. Um, Ms. Hines and I are both trained and every single one of our school nurses says, just give us a call, we'll, we'll come in. I mean, every single one ha has said, you send me a call, give me a call or a text message, I'll come right into the school. So someone's going to be available to make people still have that peace of mind. Are they 100% accurate? No, but they gave us some assurance that what we were doing was do we were doing school safely. And so um, those, those rapid tests, until we really, really flatten totally to zero, will be an available resource free of charge to our district from the state. And so that was a big blessing that yeah. we were sought out so early in our process. So, if uh, assuming there's no spike over the summer or some something that changes the current trend <clears throat> we're on, do you see next semester being mask free at I, the schools? I really do. I mean, there's some resistance. Um, at, in larger communities too, too mm -hmm. but those are also mostly in communities that hadn't had any in-person learning or had um, you know really put their foot in the water in that last quarter of the school year to have any type of in-person so I do believe that we will be at a point where and we will have vaccine clinics this summer at least two days in the month of June at Murfreesboro High School it looks like tentatively the 9th and the 10th 
Is that right? The ninth and tenth. Not the email carry about that. The ninth and the tenth mornings to to do um, adolescent uh, student vaccination clinics. So even if parents and child want to get them together, we'll have vaccine clinics <coughs> going all the way down to the the new emergency authorization of 12 years old. And if they expand down to eight years old, we will give it as an available resource. I know that uh, Carbondale, Murfreesboro, Elkville and Trico are the, the four school-based sites that are going to be used in Jackson County. So Good. just reassuring um, opportunities that people can utilize if they'd like. Yeah. All right, next item is the Student Parent Handbook for 2021-2022. It has been on the review since April, and there were no comments or questions, so the recommendation is to approve it, and I will entertain a motion to approve it unless there are any other questions from the board. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number three is the building management plans for 2021-2022. Same as the handbook, they've been on review. I'll entertain a motion to approve those plans. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number four is the approval of the Murfreesboro Middle School dishwashing machine bed, which is enclosure number one in your packet. And I'll open up the floor to any questions from the board if there are any. If there are none, then I will entertain a motion to approve that bid. So moved. And a second? Second. Mrs. Hines? Mr. Beavers? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mrs. Brazel? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Bain? Yes. Mrs. Evaldi? Yes. Mr. Runge? Yes. Motion carries. Item number five is the approval of the band instrument bid, which also was an enclosure in your packet. And I'll open up the floor for any questions if there are any. Then I'll entertain a motion to approve the bid as presented. So moved. And a second? Thank you. Mrs. Hines? Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Beavers? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mrs. Ubaldi? Yes. Mr. Bain? Yes. Mrs. Brazel? Yes. Mr. Runge? Yes. Motion carries. Item number six is the approval of the custodial equipment bid, which was also an enclosure in your uh, packet. And I'll open up the floor to questions from the board or for an approval. Second. Second. Mrs. Hines. Mr. Beavers. Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Evaldi. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Bain. Yes. Mrs. Brazel. Yes. Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Runge. Yes. Motion carries. And move into new business. <clears throat> First item under new business is to set the 2020-2021 board meeting date, which was enclosure number two in your packet. The only question that I will throw out to the board is anybody interested in moving the time up from 6.30? I'm flexible, I'll do it. I'm flexible. Anybody opposed to moving it up to 6 o'clock? No, does that create a... Well, we work, we, I wondered about Troy, because you, you work in Carterville, right? No, I'm in Carbondale now. Okay. I, yeah, that wouldn't be a, that okay. wouldn't be a hardship. Mrs. Eovaldi? It's, yeah. Works for me. Six o'clock work for everybody? That'd be sure. Great. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin and I are on the couch or in the bed early. <laughs> I know where that, that sure is coming from. Then I'll entertain a motion to approve the dates as presented with the time changing to six o'clock for the start of the meetings. And I'll entertain a motion to approve that. So moved. In a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number two is to approve the interagency co-op agreement with the Migrant Education Head Start. This is a yearly agreement that we enter into. <coughs> exactly. I will entertain a motion to approve that recommendation for that agreement. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number three is the approval of the memorandum of understanding with Centerstone, which also is a yearly continued agreement. counseling support, correct? All right, then I'll entertain a motion to approve that recommendation. So 
And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number four is the approval of the intergovernmental agreement for COPE slash safe schools. And once again, this is a yearly. Mm -hmm. And I will entertain a motion to approve that agreement. Second. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And I'm sorry. Um, no, no, I won't. I'll, I'll ask that question later. Next item is the approval of the Murfreesboro High School Library flooring quote, which is enclosure number three in your packet. And I'll open the floor to questions from the board if you have any. We're just replacing with car new carpeting and luxury uh, vinyl tile, similar to what ex it's ex the exact same flooring that's in the choir room in those high traffic areas. So it's a combination of shawl carpeting and LVT. Um, Mr. Ripley requested bids from, or quotes from three vendors, two, two provided, and the recommendation is to accept the bottom quote as the low um, carpet bid, carpet LVT bid. The carpeting, when Mr. Uh, Carrington and his crew moved a lot of, and Mr. Weaver White <coughs> removed quite a bit of the furniture, there just was significant fading and wear and tear in lots and lots of areas. There's when the circulation desk was moved, I don't know how many years ago, <laughs> but a lot of years ago, they just put <laughs> Mr. Weaver White brought in rugs and made it as homey as could be. But if you pull up the rugs, there's, you know, sections and carpeting. So it's it's a major project, but one that's definitely um, due. So how old, just curiosity, how old is that project? It's been, I've been there 14 years and it's been there ever since. I mean, and, and where the patches are, where they picked up and just didn't lay carpet, they just put it around the desks. I mean, the, the 1978 carpet's still it's the original. at those spots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are we, pulling, are we pulling bookshelves out? We're, we're moving everything out and actually laying the entire, we're not patching around uh, circulation desks and whatnot this time. Hmm. And this is not part of the grant money, or is this? This, this um, because of the not abating, we do have some local revenue to, like, local resources to do this project. So this is, this is going to be done with local dollars. Local dollars. Okay. Wow. So good question. Any other? Oh, I'm sorry. Go yes. ahead. A motion to approve. And a second. Second. Mrs. Hines. Mr. Brown. Yes. <clears throat> Mrs. Brazel. Yes. <clears throat> Mrs. Zivaldi. Yes. Mr. Bame. Yes. Mr. Beavers. Yes. Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Ruggie. Yes. Motion carries. Item number six is the permission <clears throat> for the district to bid out for two vans. And CARES grant money will be used for the purchase of these two vehicles. They are to um, replace two of the vans that are um, in pretty bad condition. So there'll be 10 passenger vans and used for. Um, food service and so I mean they have been troopers every day of the pandemic since March uh, 17th of last year so uh, this this is just to replace those two vans and it can be used for food service as well as for student any type of COVID transportation that we might need I know that several of the administrators this year went to sporting events just in case a child would become symptomatic or, or ill and needed to be separated from their team to just have those resources so it's really, really appropriate to use CARES money to kind of continue to do those best safeguard practices and continue to support food services they endeavor to, to meet our community's needs during the summer and during the traditional school year. So two vans, they also will have the ability to tow. So, um, and we're just going to make sure that we make sensible decisions on what's towed in those, those vehicles. So. so does this satisfy the vehicle need for the upcoming year at least? I, I think it will more than sufficiently. Um, is that for sports too? For coaches, takes uh, athletes, small smaller groups? groups. I mean, I would say that if, let's say, Mr. Ellemeyer has two or three kids who qualify for a cross country state, or if he needs to take a small group up, he could do that after okay. hours. So, I mean, that's that's some some of the smaller groups or um, IMEA music, and I mean, they have at the middle school and high school. Some of those groups are with ensembles if they have students who advance if they go from the digital to the in-person. Sometimes they'll need buses, sometimes they'll need much smaller than that. So it will be very useful for our students. Like almost anything we need. Absolutely. What, so, do we do with, what do we do with the old vans? Do we trade them in or do we sell them with seal bid? What do we do? I don't remember. 
I think she was trying to sort them out. We used to they were part of the middle school. Okay. And, the and we'll we'll have to have that discussion with Mr. Sure. Ripley to see if, if he'll have need for them for like auxiliary maintenance vehicles. If you know, if taking out the seats and potentially using them for maintenance would be if there's enough local life in them to use, because it's not like we're gonna get a significant amount. So depending on what Mr. Ripley says his needs look like once they come in stock, I will tell you that um, those four transit vans, I'm glad we're approving early so we can get the, the bids because they only produce them on a line like one time a year. So it may be. We may struggle getting those. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll get them in February. It might be February. I know when I purchased Impero, the 10 passenger van, we did it in the summer and it was February before they were supplied before the pandemic. And so hmm. they just don't yeah. manufacture them often, but we get, we'll get those state level rates and, and good pricing, but it will be when they produce. It's not, you know, the, the most commonly, you know, produced for a vehicle, so. Any other questions from the board? I'll entertain a motion to approve the recommendation to bid out for two vans. So moved. Second? Second. Mrs. Hines? Mrs. Evaldi? Yes. Mrs. Brazel? Yes. Mr. Bain? Yes. Mr. Beavers? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Rutney? Yes, motion carries. Item number seven is to approve the cooperative agreement with <coughs> El Verado School District, and this is for sports, correct? Any questions from the board? Is this for all sports or just for football? Mm -hmm. Just football. Wasn't football? there something that we're doing away with that for the IHSA? No um, no? There was a time where IHSA was going to make us do away right. with it, but that's kind of went away now. Okay. Um, and, and they sent us a reminder that we would have to renew that for a two-year period. It's done on two-year periods. So this is two years? This will be a okay. two year. So it's not going to. What was the reason before it bumped us up a class or something it, like that? Well, at, there was a time where I just was thinking that a 4 A school didn't need to be co oping. They're big enough. Okay. Usually a co op is for a 1 A school right. that doesn't have enough kids. So two 1 A schools would join together, kind of like Oakville or El Dorado and Trico did it at one time. Um, but I think they realized that it's really not for the 4 A school. It's for the 1A school in Murfreesboro is the closest, and Murfreesboro is the one district willing to do it. Trico and El Dorado weren't willing to do it. Duquoin wasn't willing to do it any longer. We still are. Um, we're at a good spot with our classification right now uh, at around 590-ish to 600 to where adding El Dorado's attendance does not bump us into 5A. We're pretty solid towards the bottom third of 4A but we're not close enough that we're going to be 3A anytime soon. So it doesn't affect us too much. Mm -hmm. We get two to five players a year in the entire program, so it's not, it's not like it's helping us a ton, but it's definitely offering some of those El Dorado students the opportunity to play so football. So I just they get the deal, right? Yeah, okay. so we're, we're good with it. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agreement with the uh, El Dorado School District. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight is the approval of the Murfreesboro Middle School math curriculum. And Mrs. Sunny is here. If the board has any questions for her, I do have uh, at least one question. Yeah. Uh, last month, the board approved the high school math curriculum. How does this align with what we approved last month? So we're going to adopt Big Ideas, which is a Cengage uh, publishing company. Um, it's the same curriculum that the high school did adopt. So now we'll be sixth grade through 12th grade. So we'll have that vertical alignment from sixth grade to 12th grade. Um, Big Ideas, it aligns with the Common Core and it has the eight mathematical practices also aligned in it. It also has a digital piece, so it's gonna give students that where we have one-to-one -one Chromebook student ratio um, digital access to all of those components that the teachers will be teaching. Um, so I think this is really going to help with our vertical alignment. Okay, then, one, then one other question, and, and you, I guess you and, and Mrs. Speaker are going to have to educate me here that now. The board has been asking for this vertical alignment for a while. Is it even possible or feasible that we can have K through 12 vertical alignment, is that possible or is that asking a little much? 
we can have K through 12 alignment, but using the same math series K 12 is probably not going to happen. Um, the so K other series, other subjects could be then. Other subjects could okay. be. I think the difficulty is finding, you know, instead of calling it a curriculum, call it a resource, a textbook. Like the curriculum is dictated by the state and the standards, but the resource that we use. Um, varies greatly just depending on what's appropriate for age level. So, for example, Big Ideas was not liked by K-5. They looked at it, they, they've had a presentation, they didn't feel like it was right for them. Um, but that doesn't mean that whatever is chosen won't align very well with what they're choosing as long as we're standards based. Sure. Okay. Any other questions from the board? But the goal would be to find a series. And no, I, I think yeah, the nice thing that. is yeah. that the, 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 the textbook tool at K to 5, that there'll be agreement between those two, two buildings to, to find yes. the math, the English language arts. And I think you're right that when you find like social studies curriculum, that might be, you know, whether it's National Geographic or whatever product, you know, when we get to back into that cycle rotation. Having a K to 12 consideration, English language arts, when they look at the intervention piece, is the biggest, I think, stumbling point at math. And I think you're going to see that too. Is how robust is the intervention for those kids who aren't, aren't at grade level? Because the solution is not to say a third grader who has second grade skills or second second grade benchmarking needs. They said, well, just put them at the second grade second grade material. They really need an adaptation of the third grade content materials. They need to have intervention at that grade level because they're going to be tested and they're going to have that expectation for when they complete that, that year to have a modified curriculum with those still grade level skills. And so I know that that was the biggest concern is that the intervention pieces, when they talked to big ideas, it was like, well, if it's a third grader and they're functioning at a first grade level, have them do the first grade big idea content or the second grade. And, that's not a good solution because then that child just becomes more gap driven and you're always looking for the material that's not really matching the peers and that creates isolation among students and it's just not best practice. And so I know they're gonna look at those intervention level pieces, especially when you're digging deeply into math and English language arts. So, so going in from fifth grade into sixth grade, the transition is gonna come evenly for the math. If we are all using a standards-based curriculum, then yes, K through five should prepare them easily for the sixth grade curriculum. So I do have a question about the digital piece of this. Um, how equivalent to is this to like Khan Academy as far as the videos go? There, there are videos for all of the lessons yeah. with each standard. So if we were to ever have to go. Um, virtual again like all virtual this would this would do it so and it teach, even like would, has a curriculum map with like ixl and other supports that i know that's what we're going to use this summer the middle school is for their summer school program is the ixl and so we've kind of looked at some road maps that we can use with this piece and that ixl piece as well so next year, if we ever have to, like with snow days, they'll become, and we, ha we haven't set the dates to do that, but we'll have an, an e-learning plan. And so if we ever have to go to an electronic learning model, or if a kid does have COVID or it gets exposed, if they have to go to that temporary remote setting, then they can, if, with that content, they can use even, it. Most e of them even if it's just a, a simple situation where a student does not understand a lesson that they've had with their teacher the last two days, they can then get on Cengage, log in, watch the videos from the company, as well as our math department has put together tons of videos that they're going to store and catalog. So we're getting to a point that we've never been to before with the Chromebooks and the one-to-one -one that students can watch a lesson from a teacher that three years ago they never would have been able to get that lesson again unless they go in and get tutoring with that person. Are there textbooks with this curriculum? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. I have some uh, people, parents were asking them, would they be able to come home with the textbooks so they can yes. sit there and learn and help them from the book? They will have and a textbook and, and a digital app. And if they have the, if they use the digital app, I mean, I just know from <clears> last year that I had to relearn 
math that I have yeah. to remember. <laughs> <laughs> watch the video with them right. too. Yeah. <laughs> right. Is the expectation though that the teacher would still be just as much involved? They'll be teaching, and we are lessons. not going to rely solely Absolutely. on Absolutely. that Absolutely. video to teach. And as I said, I mean, our teachers even have videos right now that they can share with students of them walking through the problem. You know, a, a five-minute video that's not a 50-minute long class period, but it gets right to the issues that that student's having as well. And, I mean, it should be mentioned that with us being a gear-up school at the middle school and the high school, we have access to uh, tutor.com, which is 24-7. Our students can log in. 24-7, 365 days a year, they can log in and they'll have a live tutor to chat with and go through any help that they need as well in life. And that was one of the things too that when you looked at the digital resources, if a child forgets a book at home, they don't have to figure out like how to get to someone who can let them in to get to their locker to get to their book. You know, that, that digital tool will provide them with the resource if they forget their textbook at home. But it really, what was the per, per unit difference between having the textbook and the, te the digital. It was, it wasn't yeah, much. Like eighteen dollars. I think it was. Yeah, I was going to say it was under twenty dollars per student. So <coughs> to get them both the textbook and the other. And, and so it just didn't make sense. I mean, to spend, yeah, just the extra eighteen dollars. I know it's, um, in math, I always like to have the textbook. I like to be able to sit it there and not have to worry about my team, my screen. I like to do side by side. So I think it's, it's all like that. And we, and I mean, we are still, we, we are as well, we're going back to a Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2 approach, not Integrated Math 1, Integrated Math 2, Integrated Math 3. We're going, we're going back to the more, I mean, it will still match with the standards that the state says that you need in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Is it pretty similar to the Saxton edition then? No. No? No. How many adaptions are there to that book? We adopted the vocational curriculum this year, and the math is being bought essentially a year ahead of cycle. Or, you know, I mean, it would have been next year's curriculum adoption, but we did it early. So I know high school will fully implement big ideas this this school. coming school year, right. and then mm -hmm. uh, that was going to slowly work their way in. They're going to start with this digital piece first, and, and then, then and then they want to add and add. then get the professional development to, to really be successful. Really I want to get this tutor information because I want to try it out about three in the morning and see what kind of talent level we're working with. <laughs> the Crowbrooks don't work at three in the morning. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? <laughs> then I'll entertain a motion to approve the Murfreesboro <coughs> Middle School math curriculum as presented. So moved. And a second? Second. Mrs. Hines? Mrs. Evaldi? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Beavers? Yes. Mrs. Brazel? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Bain? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. Motion carries. Item number nine is the Egyptian Area Schools Employee Benefit Trust Health Insurance Renewal, which was enclosure number four in your packet. Mrs. Bush is not here. I will uh, just highlight a couple of things on here. Uh, the increase to the district for the 2021-2022 school year will be around 8%, which is less than it was a year ago. I believe it was double digits a year ago, um, which means that the district will now be paying $914 per month per employee uh, for the health insurance. So. And it should be noted that if we do have a healthier year, one of the things that we saw, I think there were 36 or 37 schools that were listed, that when they had a healthy year saw um, reductions in their rates by 10%. Hopefully, you know, we have those, you know, like that magical, you know, year or two that we can capture. But um, with our, the health of our pool right now, that, that's not the case. So keep our, let's keep our fingers crossed. We, yeah, it would be nice to get one. Here you can't really shop right now because we'd have to buy out. It right. would be a big chunk of running here. And when you're looking at the health history that we've had with some cancers right. and things, better, right. it's, not, it's not the time to shop. I, we'd like to consider, like you said last year, a reduction from last year's uh, premium increases, and hopefully we'll, we'll start to see that downtick, and then we maybe can go out and have consideration for shopping. I do, do want to say that it was really reassuring when we went out for the band instruments and the dishwashers and um, the janitorial equipment. We, had, we received multiple bids for each of those, you know, items. And so that's, that's really reassuring that, 
you know, companies locally, regionally, and, um, you know, nationally are, are looking for, you know, providing us with the best opportunities at the best price with good service. So. Any other questions from the board? So just out of curiosity, our, is our insurance going to include in the claims data, and this is something you'll have to ask them because I know you won't know, right? Um, any COVID related visits? I don't know if they, they pull that out or if that would be, you know, in the individual explanation of benefits. I don't know that they don't necessarily would delineate it for us because I'm just saying in general, is it a policy of theirs to pull out the COVID related claims from our claims data? Something I could definitely send an email on, but you I mean, do not know the answer. Are you asking if they, when they get tested or? No, anything with a COVID diagnosis on it, are they pulling that dollar amount out of our claims data so that it's not gonna come against us later and they'll continue to count it as? Treatment. Yeah. Since this is a co-op, I doubt it. But they do use Blue Cross, so I don't, I don't know. So anytime it's a good question. question. It's a good question. Yeah, but they, that's the reinsurance, right? The Blues do the reinsurance. So yeah. they're keeping everything in the trust until it gets to a, a, a limit, and then they pass those individual catastrophic claims out to the reinsurance. Okay. Um, my guess is they're including it, Jamie. I think they are too. Yeah. I think they are. So sometimes those yeah. like swabbings and things that you have to get because you're going to have a wisdom tooth extracted, teeth extracted or something, you know, those COVID related expense or just that well check before you, you know, go under the gas or whatever. I just don't uh, think that it would, it's very fair to us to continue to but I guess it in our claims data when it's a pandemic and it's not something that. But the pandemic affected everyone globally. So I would say that it, there would be universally more medical re expenses related across the board and at, whether you're uh, Murfreesboro or Franco, you know, you're going to have more, you know. As Troy mentioned, because it's a co-op, it's a risk-sharing pool mm -hmm. until they get to that catastrophic claim. So my guess is everything's in the bucket. Yep. Probably. They don't tease it out. Yeah. You can have Jan ask that question though, right? Sure. Yeah. You just have her send it out to the board if you would. Well, and, and we can also, like in the manager's meeting, you know, this <coughs> summer, they, those are questions that they, where they say, are you know, once you pull, can, you know, is there a, a, an ability to extrapolate that information so that it doesn't impact, like, your, your rating for the next year? And if, you know, someone got, and that's the nice part about our surveillance testing because, you know, we did have individuals who got three rapid tests a week for a while, so... Could you imagine if that was three PCR tests with, you know, a billable amount, even if they had paid no nothing out of pocket, that still would be a billable service. And so they did it three times a week at X number of dollars, billed insurance. So it is, it's a really valid question, but I know that, you know, you see each week we're over 700 rapid tests, that, that we're not 700 students or individuals who likely had to go and get it. All the more reason we should keep doing rapid testing mm -hmm. at our district level. Any other questions from the board? Then I'll entertain a motion to approve the recommendation for the health insurance. So, so moved. Second. Mrs. Hines? Mr. Bain? Yes. Mrs. Evaldi? Yes. Mrs. Brazel? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Beavers? Yes. Mr. Ruggie? Yes, motion carries. Last item is the permission to bid a maintenance tractor. And I'll open the floor to questions from the board. We've had lots of PTO issues that um, become more and more costly, and even the loaner one we had had um, a buyer last week. So I mean, it's just not great. Like, but they did provide us with the loaner so we could, you know, consider our options. And I would say this is this will not be through um, COVID dollars, but but it's something that's def definitely needed. We, we really struggled when we went down that tractor and had to make do until we got the loaner in. And, you, know, it, you, know, you start with the parts and see if you can repair, and then we can't repair, and it becomes a bigger concern. They were mowing 14-hour days just to try to keep up, and I know some of the schools did not look up to par at, at moments because they, you know, when you're down, something like the tractor. Any question? Any other questions from the board? Then I'll entertain a motion to approve the permission to bid for a maintenance tractor. 
So moved. Second. Second. Mrs. Hines? Mr. Beavers? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Salter? <coughs> yes. Mr. Bame? Yes. Mrs. Brazel? Yes. Mr. Rungy? Yes, motion carries. We have a need to go into closed session. We make a motion to go into closed session pursuant <coughs> to section two of the Open Meetings Act 5, Illinois Compiled Statutes 120-2C to review the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the district employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body to determine its validity. You change that one up a little bit. Second. Mrs. Hines? Mr. Beavers? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Evaldi? Yes. Mr. Baim? Yes. Mrs. Brazel? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Rungy? Yes. Motion carries. 5-0.